So good morning, everybody, and welcome to our workshop. My name is Thomas Jabush, and um, we are hearing about the use of NOAA remote sensing tools for evaluating cyanobacterial um, harmful algal blooms, cyano house in California lakes. And um, I'm going to stand here a little awkwardly right next to the phone because I was advised to do so, so that the people on the phone can hear us. Um, the audience here in the room um, is, I think we've got a great turnout, but it's a little bit deceptively small because our largest audience is out um, on the phones. We have, um, by my last count, 72 RSVPs for the WebEx. So. So, um, of course, um, this workshop um, has been brought to you by the State Water Resources Control Board and specifically the um, Surface Water Indian Monitoring Program, the SWAM. We're hosted today by US EPA Region 9, for those of you on the phone. Um, and um, EPA isn't just the physical host of this workshop, EPA is also a partner of NOAA in, in a larger national um, partnership that is just being started with California being one of the places where this work is being started to, to develop um, remote sensing tools and apply nationwide to um, monitor uh, cyanide house and other things. And, and there's, um, Sue advised me there's going to be a, um, another webinar on June 17th and Sue may have the details for that. Thanks, Thomas. So on uh, June 17th, we're going to be having another webinar in the afternoon with Blake Schaefer, who is EPA's PI on the national partnership between NOAA, NASA, USGS, and EPA. And it will be to kind of find out what are important issues in Region 9. And then on June 29th, Blake Schaefer is going to be here in the region, and we're going to be, um, actually, I'm sorry, he's not going to be here on the 29th. That is the kickoff for the collaborators, the national call for the SIAM, the national project. So be watching for emails from those dates. Thanks, Sue. And um, of course, um, the lead agency for this workshop is um, the National Ocean Out. Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, National Centers for Coastal Ocean Science. And we got three scientists from um, NOAA here today, um, Rick Stumpf, and is going to be the, instruct, the main instructor for this workshop. Um, and his co-instructors are um, Andrew Meredith and um, Jelly Tomlinson. So we got three NOAA scientists here today. Um, so here are the organizers of this workshop. Um, there's there's um, three people from the swamp: um, Karen Taberski, Karen Worcester, and Lori Weber, as well as Sue Keidel and um, Terry Fleming from EPA, and, and me. The other people here on this list, um, they're not just organizing this workshop. They have been very very active in um, in um, bringing attention to this issue of Cyano House in California. And making things move and and bring resources and attention to this issue. Um, and as part of the SWAM program, um, have have been doing a lot of work um, in getting a statewide fresh, statewide freshwater cap monitoring program going. And some of the initial activities of the SWAM are um, currently there's a monitoring strategy that's being developed and. The SWAM has also started to fund um, priority initiatives um, that are getting off the ground any time now. Um, the development of a um, comprehensive database, a web portal, and a reporting system, um, training for volunteers, um, doing important lab analysis for cyanotoxins and phytoplankton composition analysis, development of SOPs among those um, activities that the SWAM uh, is, initiating, is, is initiating as well as um, 
funding satellite monitoring as, as a promising tool. So from the SWARM perspective, um, some of the initial uses of um, these NOAA remote sensing tools. Um, there's a lot of lakes in California, and monitoring no. would be monu a monumental no, task. I don't think we're connected. Oh, no, no, now it's doing something. The SWARM is developing. Um, as I said, this is part of a, also of a GIS specialist training. That, that is going on for two days, um, and GIS yeah, specialists will learn the skills to work with satellite images and the NOAA products um, uh, to be able to assist um, with lake monitoring and decision support activities. And um, it's a fairly small group of people, and the idea was in part that this is the first group of people, and they would be able to serve as the, the trainers who would train others as well. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is that we also wanted to, we are also planning on having more trainings in the future for, for a wider audience. So that's one of the things we're thinking about. So, and without further ado, so we're going to have um, some fluidity this morning. Um, two things to mention are we're going to put the WebEx on mute just because we have so many people dialing in. If you have um, questions during the discussions, please um, submit them using the uh, chat window to SFEI, and then we're going to share them with the presenters. And yeah, we need to we need to end at 12:10 sharp um, because uh, we need to be out of this room. So um, those are the two constraints that we're having. Um, other than that, it's going to be a relatively fluid morning. Um, we're going to have Rick Stump from NOAA later talk about NOAA's tools. But before we get to that, we're going to start with Karen Zabrowski. Um, Karen will tell us about, um, first of all, the, the salmon health issues in, in California in general, as well as SWAMP's efforts in, um, in developing a freshwater harmful algorithm pro monitoring program. And Karen Zabrowski is part of the SWAMP. She is um, Region 2, the San Francisco Regional Board's representative on SWAM, um, and, and, and Senior Environmental Scientist was Region 2 um, and their Region Monitoring Coordinator. And she's been very active in, um, in um, getting more attention to the SWAM issue, uh, to this climate health issue, and, and um, help us getting this program off the ground. 